Dr. Milton Wainwright seeks to persuade the public that he has discovered advanced life hovering approximately 25 miles above Earth's surface. However, despite the eagerness of tabloids to embrace his narrative, the scientific community remains hesitant to endorse his findings. If one were to come across life existing at an altitude of 25 miles above the surface, it would undoubtedly be an extraordinary occurrence. Traditional aircraft do not reach such heights, and although it is arguable whether powerful volcanic eruptions could disperse living cells to such altitudes, there is no evidence to suggest that a volcanic eruption was responsible for this discovery. Therefore, if any form of life were indeed able to float at such heights, it would undoubtedly merit thorough investigation. Oddly enough, further investigations haven't occurred, and the scientific world doesn't want to pursue this discovery any further. So, why haven't scientists shown more interest in this phenomenon? Dr. Wainwright, a microbiologist employed in the Department of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at the University of Sheffield, has been attempting to inform the scientific community about his belief that Earth is being actively targeted by advanced beings. According to his theory, these advanced life forms are implanting minuscule living probes into our atmosphere using microscopic metal spheres, which are intelligently designed to seed life on our planet. Predictably, this assertion was met with skepticism among researchers, prompting him to adopt an alternative strategy. The teacher sent his findings to his students via email, and a portion of them shared it on various social media platforms. So, what is the reason behind the lack of belief from the majority? The evidence is interesting, and one photograph shows a mysterious orb that appears to contain an unidentified biological ooze. Additionally, his studies have been published in the Journal of Cosmology, a publication that has faced criticism for its questionable peer review process and outdated design from the 1990s. Also, scientists and researchers that have presented their research into advanced life usually get looked down upon by the scientific world, with some scientists going as far as refusing to talk about the subject. Dr. Wainwright clarified that the critics argue that the samples we collected could have originated from Earth. They believe that there must be a process that can carry these particles from Earth to the stratosphere. The DNA containing masses and other peculiar organisms we have identified are not related to pollen, grass or fungal spores found on our sampler. If our organisms had indeed come from Earth, they would have been contaminated with typical Earth organisms, but this is not the case. Based on his statements, the organisms exhibit DNA presence and possess masses exceeding the size threshold for particles that can be transported from Earth to this altitude. Additionally, he assures that he thoroughly examined for potential contamination using high-altitude balloons. Dr. Wainwright informed scientists that they conducted an experiment involving balloons and a sampler, and they discovered that there was no pollen or grass present in the samples. This suggests that the samples were completely pure and unaffected by any outside contamination. Based on these findings, Dr. Wainwright believes that the organisms found in the samples are likely originating from space. He further explains that whenever we venture outside, we are constantly bombarded with organisms that originate from space. Wainwright has previously reported similar findings on multiple occasions. In 2013, he observed a similar phenomenon suspended 16 miles above the Earth's surface. As mentioned, he shared an image depicting a small metallic sphere emitting a viscous substance collected from the Earth's stratosphere by a balloon. However, his research did not undergo proper approval or recognition and nobody has attempted to replicate his findings. It leaves us wondering whether Wainwright's discoveries are simply a peculiar outcome of scientific exploration or if they hold significant meaning. The truth remains uncertain. Panspermia, an ancient concept rejuvenated by modern astrobiological research, hypothesizes that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by cosmic dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, planetoids, and spacecraft in the form of microbial life forms or biochemical precursors of life. In its simplest form, panspermia suggests that life or the necessary elements to initiate life could survive the inhospitable vacuum of space encased in cosmic bodies and be dispersed throughout the cosmos. This notion offers a counter perspective to the conventional idea that life began on Earth, asserting that our planet might instead have been seeded by advanced life. 
This transference of life could occur through various mechanisms. Lithopanspermia involves rocks or other matter being ejected from a planet due to a significant event like an asteroid impact. This ejected matter, potentially containing microbial life or its precursors, could travel through space and eventually land on another planet. If the new planet's conditions were hospitable, the contained life forms could propagate, effectively seeding life. Alternatively, radiopanspermia proposes that tiny life forms or organic molecules could be pushed across space by the radiation pressure from stars. The theory of panspermia, once consigned to the realm of science fiction, has gradually found support from various scientific observations and experiments. First, some microorganisms, such as tardigrades and specific types of bacteria, have exhibited impressive resilience to the harsh conditions of space, including extreme temperature fluctuations, vacuum conditions, and cosmic radiation. This extreme resilience underpins the viability of panspermia. Secondly, organic molecules, the building blocks of life, have been discovered in meteorites, comets, and interstellar dust clouds, suggesting that these essential ingredients for life are not exclusive to Earth, but are widespread in the cosmos. Perhaps the most compelling support for panspermia comes from the rapid emergence of life on Earth. Geological records indicate that life sprang up on Earth relatively soon after the planet became habitable. This abrupt appearance of life has led some scientists to speculate that life might have originated elsewhere and been transported to Earth. If panspermia is accurate, it raises fascinating possibilities about the prevalence and diversity of life in the universe. The seeding of life on Earth could imply that life originated from a location in the cosmos, with conditions more favorable to life's genesis, potentially Mars, or even a different star system. This idea is testable. Discovering evidence of past or present life on Mars or other celestial bodies, and analyzing their biochemistry, could reveal a shared ancestry with terrestrial life. However, panspermia does not answer the fundamental question, how and where did life first originate? It merely suggests that life's birthplace could be somewhere other than Earth. Understanding life's origin, therefore, remains one of the biggest unsolved puzzles. Panspermia also significantly broadens the potential habitats for advanced life, extending them beyond planets and moons to include interstellar dust clouds, meteorites, and other celestial bodies. Consequently, it has considerable implications for astrobiology and the search for advanced life. While we have yet to confirm panspermia, the theory forces us to rethink the conventional Earth-centric perspective on life's origin and distribution. It nudges us to regard life as a cosmic, rather than a terrestrial phenomenon, shaped by galactic dynamics and planetary evolution. The question of whether life exists beyond Earth has fascinated humans for centuries. As our understanding of the cosmos expands, we have come to realize that the conditions for life might not be as unique as once believed. The first point to consider is our definition of life. Terrestrially, life is characterized by a set of features, including the ability to grow, reproduce, respond to environmental changes, and undergo evolution. However, life elsewhere in the universe might not follow these exact principles. Therefore, astrobiology often seeks to identify biosignatures, signs of past or present life, such as certain chemical imbalances or structures that would indicate the presence of living organisms. Next, we must consider the conditions needed for life as we understand it. Life on Earth requires a stable source of energy, like our sun, and a suitable environment, such as the presence of water, and an atmosphere with the right chemical components. With this understanding, astrobiologists have been able to identify numerous habitable zones around other stars where conditions might be right for life as we know it. The phenomenon of cattle expirations, characterized by unexplained livestock passing away under inexplicably precise surgical incisions, has been a source of mystery and controversy for decades. Cattle expirations are often associated with rural and remote areas, aligning with where livestock farming is prevalent. The phenomenon is not limited to a single species, affecting a range of livestock, but the prevalence in cattle is likely due to their ubiquity in farming. The expirations are distinguished by their peculiar characteristics, including precise cuts, the removal of specific organs or soft tissue, and the absence of tracks around the carcasses. Authorities have just announced 
that more cattle have been found across the United States, exhibiting the same injuries as seen in other cases. The perpetrators silenced the cows by taking out their tongues, yet there was no evidence of remains or struggle. Surprisingly, no traces of footprints or tire tracks were discovered. This perplexed investigators as they tried to unravel the mystery surrounding the unidentified individual or group behind these brutal acts in Texas, wondering how they managed to leave no clues behind. In a short period of time, seven cows were discovered in three counties in Texas, all under suspicious conditions. The cows were found lying on one side, with part of their face visible and their tongues missing. The series of cow expirations took place in Madison, Brazos and Robertson counties, which are situated in east-central Texas. Each cow was targeted from a separate pasture and herd. The Madison County Sheriff's Office reported that a precise and clean incision was made to remove the hide around the cow's mouth on one side, while leaving the untouched meat underneath the removed hide. All five cows had been cut with circular incisions, similar to the cuts observed on the jawlines of all the cows. Ranchers have stated that there were no predators or birds that had fed on the remains, which aligns with what is typically observed in comparable incidents. While the exact cause of the cow's demise remains uncertain, these unusual incidents have brought to mind a long-standing theory regarding the unexplained expiration of livestock, dating back to the 1970s in the United States. This theory implicates advanced beings in unidentified aircrafts as the culprits responsible for these mysterious occurrences. During that time, a significant number of animal expirations occurred in at least seven states in the United States, which caused some to suggest that advanced beings were engaging in attacks and experiments on terrestrial animals. Alternatively, some individuals believed that these incidents were linked to humans, but those who investigated these claims further noted that there was no evidence of humans being in the area and the use of surgical equipment couldn't be explained. Others have also pointed out that if this was the government, which is a long-believed theory, why wouldn't they raise cattle of their own and do this in private? Why would they risk getting caught out in the open? In 1979, the FBI initiated a comprehensive inquiry into a series of comparable expirations that were occurring in New Mexico. However, an investigation determined that the puzzling expirations of livestock animals, resembling the recent incidents in Texas, were actually attributed to natural predation. The Robertson County Sheriff's Office announced that the autopsy results released identified pneumonia as the cause for one of the cows. However, similar to the findings of the FBI's investigation, the report did not provide any explanation for the injuries sustained by the animal. The Madison County Sheriff's Department stated that they are actively collaborating with other agencies to investigate numerous similar incidents reported throughout the United States. Other ranchers nearby are anxious about the possibility of their cattle being taken out in the same manner. Mark Enlow, a resident of Madison County, resides in the same area where the cattle expirations occurred. He expressed his worry regarding the series of attacks that have taken place recently. He said that he currently has livestock, located in close proximity to where these incidents of expirations have occurred, just a few miles away. He explained that he is actively vigilant, monitoring the area, and conducting regular inspections throughout the day and night to detect any unusual activities. Enlo mentioned that his neighbor is implementing additional safety measures by installing surveillance cameras around his cattle as a precautionary measure in case he becomes a target in the future. Steve Cole, a close friend of Enlo's and also the Justice of the Peace in Madison County, is facing additional concerns. Recently, one of Cole's cows was discovered under suspicious circumstances and to this day no explanation has been given as to what happened. While the cow was not subjected to any surgical cuts, Cole remains uncertain whether these occurrences are interconnected. The Animal Legal Defense Fund is currently offering a reward of $5,000 in exchange for any valuable information that can assist in the identification, arrest, and conviction of the individuals involved in the unfortunate demise of these cows. As of right now, though, there's still many unanswered questions about who is behind these expirations. Oddly enough, some farmers have come forward and detailed that they've witnessed strange lights above their cattle, only to find them not moving the following morning. The phenomenon of unidentified objects, 
now commonly referred to as unidentified aerial phenomena, has sparked intrigue and skepticism in equal measure since the term was first coined in the 1950s. Rural areas, including pastures and farmland, provide the backdrop for a significant number of mysterious aircraft encounters. The solitude, low light pollution, and unobstructed sight lines typical of these environments may contribute to the prevalence of sightings. Furthermore, the rural backdrop contributes to the air of mystery surrounding these accounts. One of the most notable instances of a mysterious sighting above a farmland occurred back in 1979 when a Scottish farmer named Robert Taylor encountered a strange object in a woodland area near Livingston, West Lothian. The event, known as the Robert Taylor Incident, remains one of the most famous cases worldwide due to the physical evidence left behind, specifically imprints in the ground and damage to Taylor's clothing, elements not commonly associated with mysterious sightings. The American Midwest, with its expansive farmlands, is another hotspot for sightings. Notably, the mysterious case that happened in 1957 when multiple witnesses across small Texas towns reported seeing a brightly lit, egg-shaped object and experiencing unexplained vehicle disturbances. The reports were deemed credible due to the independent yet consistent descriptions of the event. Analyzing why mysterious aircrafts appear above farmland has sparked several theories many of which draw on the characteristics of rural life. One postulates that advanced life may be studying agricultural practices, a crucial aspect of human civilization. Another theory suggests that mysterious aircrafts utilize remote areas to avoid detection and limit interaction with human populations. A strategic move if one assumes these sightings are driven by observational or exploratory intentions. Despite the intrigue and anecdotal accounts, Skepticism remains. Critics argue that misinterpretations of natural or man-made phenomena, like aircraft, drones or even meteorological events, are often mistaken for unidentified aircrafts. Scientific investigations often lean towards debunking such sightings or attributing them to explainable occurrences. Yet, some cases remain unresolved, keeping the door open to the possibility that something unknown may be involved. As mentioned, in the 1970s, ranchers across the nation started noticing an unusual phenomenon. They discovered their livestock, specifically cows, expired under mysterious circumstances. Historian Michael J. Goldman delved into this perplexing situation and said that these incidents were unrelated to mysterious aircrafts. According to Goldman, the occurrences of cattle expirations started in 1973, primarily in the western and midwestern regions. These incidents were mainly reported by small-scale ranchers. Upon investigation by local law enforcement, it was commonly discovered that various parts of the cow had been removed with precise surgical precision. Newspaper reports indicate that by the end of the decade, over 10,000 of these occurrences had taken place. There have been suggestions from certain sources indicating that the expirations could potentially be linked to a covert government initiative aimed at conducting trials for biological weapons. There were various speculations in the news regarding the involvement of mysterious aircrafts, but among ranchers, the prevailing belief was that the government was involved. Some individuals proposed that the livestock expirations were linked to a covert government initiative testing biological weapons. Additionally, there were accounts of unmarked helicopters observed near the locations of these incidents, with some ranchers even claiming to have been pursued by these aircraft. In a few instances, Outraged ranchers took action and fired at government helicopters. The seriousness of the situation prompted the Nebraska National Guard to adjust their flight altitude from 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet during their exercises. To understand the cause of the panic, Goldman proposes that we take into account the circumstances. In the early 1970s, ranchers faced challenging conditions. Firstly, they perceived federal environmental conservation efforts as a threat including restrictions on grazing in public areas. Additionally, the combination of high inflation rates and the government's significant grain purchases to address global food shortages led to increased feed prices. Furthermore, the Nixon administration implemented a meat price freeze. This entire situation, commonly referred to as the wreck, disproportionately affected small ranches without the same lobbying power as larger operations. 
when organizations like the Colorado Bureau of Investigation investigated the instances of cattle expirations and discovered no evidence of human participation. Certain ranchers began to suspect that it might be another instance of governmental wrongdoing. In reality, the notion of government involvement was not entirely unreasonable. Considering that the army unintentionally caused the passing of over 4,500 sheep during nerve agent testing in Utah in 1968 and only admitted responsibility in 1998, there is historical precedent for such suspicions. However, according to Goldman, it is highly likely that the majority of the expirations were actually caused by scavengers such as coyotes, magpies and badgers. These scavengers typically consume soft tissues first. So, without the sensational aspect, the random expiration of cows on ranches were not unusual. The lack of familiarity among law enforcement officials with scavengers' behavior may have led them to describe the removal of bovine body parts in a way that implied human involvement. This, in turn, may have influenced early media reports and prompted other ranchers to report similar expirations. However, veterinarians and large-scale ranchers remained skeptical from the outset. Since the mid-20th century, reports of unidentified objects have frequently coincided with unexplained cattle anomalies. The latter typically manifest as cattle expirations, where livestock are found deceased with inexplicable surgical precision in their injuries, and a seeming disregard for natural predation or human foul play. The geographical correlation between cattle and mysterious sightings is noteworthy. Many unexplained aircraft's encounters occur in rural and remote areas, where large herds of cattle are often found. These areas provide both the solitude and unobstructed sight lines favorable for unidentified sightings. The overlap might suggest a connection, although it could also merely be a consequence of incidental geography. The prevalent theory to explain this connection posits that advanced beings may be conducting biological experiments or research on Earth's fauna, with cattle serving as convenient, widespread, and relatively isolated test subjects. Cattle, being a crucial part of human agriculture and diet, would offer advanced civilizations valuable insights into Earth's biosphere and human society. Moreover, the specific nature of the expirations, often characterized by the removal of soft tissue and the draining of fluids, suggests a level of scientific investigation. However, these unexplained phenomena often ignore conventional wisdom about the handling of biological specimens. For instance, the absence of blood at the scene is often reported, an anomaly that fuels the advanced hypothesis yet contradicts known methods of biological sampling. This theory, while intriguing, is not without criticism. Skeptics argue that the expirations could be the result of natural predation or scavenging, misinterpreted due to the absence of traditional wildlife marks. Additionally, the reported precision of the expirations could be inflated by sensationalism or misperception, and the lack of remains may be attributable to common post-mortem processes. It was a day of celebration as the new king was being crowned. The streets were lined with cheering crowds, and the air was filled with the sound of trumpets and drums. But amidst the festivities, a dark and ominous figure was seen lurking in the shadows. Those who watched the event live said that the figure in question was the Grim Reaper, his black cloak billowing as he watched the coronation procession from a distance. The people who saw this mysterious figure posted on social media about what it could have been, even going as far as wondering what his presence could mean. Some believed that the Reaper was a sign of impending doom, while others thought that he was simply a figure of myth and legend. As the coronation ceremony proceeded, the Grim Reaper remained on the outskirts of the crowd, watching silently as the new king was crowned. His presence cast a pall over the joyful occasion, and many could not shake the feeling of unease that his appearance had brought. But as the ceremony drew to a close, the Grim Reaper suddenly vanished into the shadows, leaving behind nothing but a chill in the air and a sense of foreboding in the hearts of the people. Since the mysterious figure was sighted, rumors began to spread about the strange figure, with those suggesting that the Reaper was there to witness the coronation live. Despite these unsettling reports, it seemed that no one in the crowd noticed this strange figure. Although it made the day interesting, those who followed the event closely said that it was likely a member of the clergy. As of right now, 
it's likely this mystery is solved, but there are still some questions about the royal family that haven't yet been answered. The Mysterious Disappearance of the Princes in the Tower The disappearance of King Edward V and his brother, the Duke of York, in the summer of 1483, remains one of the most enduring mysteries in British history. The two boys, who were aged 12 and 9 respectively, were placed in the Tower of London by their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who had recently assumed the role of Lord Protector following the passing of their father, King Edward IV. However, the boys were never seen or heard from again, and their fate remains unknown to this day. Many theories have been put forward over the years, with some suggesting that someone took their lives to claims that they were smuggled out of the tower and raised in secret. One of the most widely accepted theories is that Richard III, who was famously portrayed as a villain by William Shakespeare, had the boys taken out in order to secure his own claim to the throne. This theory is based on circumstantial evidence, such as the fact that the boys were never seen again after being placed in the tower and the fact that Richard III was crowned king shortly thereafter. However, there is no direct evidence to support this theory, and some historians argue that it is unlikely that Richard III would have risked such an extreme act of violence, especially given the potential political backlash that could have ensued. Other theories suggest that the boys were smuggled out of the tower and raised in secret, either by supporters of the House of York or by sympathisers of the deposed Lancastrian dynasty. There have been occasional claims of descendants of the boys being discovered over the centuries, but these claims have never been substantiated. In recent years, some historians and researchers have suggested that the remains of the boys may have been discovered in the Tower of London during renovations in the 17th century. In 1674, two small skeletons were discovered beneath a staircase in the White Tower and were believed to be the remains of the missing princes. However, this theory has been disputed by others who argue that there is insufficient evidence to definitively link the remains to the boys. Despite the many theories and speculations surrounding the fate of King Edward V and his brother, the truth remains a mystery. The disappearance of the two boys has become one of the most enduring and intriguing mysteries in British history, inspiring countless books, plays and films over the years. However, what is clear is that their disappearance had a profound impact on the course of English history. The events that followed, including the rise of the Tudor dynasty and the reign of Henry VII, were shaped by the uncertainty and suspicion that surrounded the disappearance of the two princes. The mystery of the missing princes has captivated the public imagination for centuries and continues to fascinate historians, scholars and enthusiasts alike. The true fate of King Edward V and his brother may never be known, but their story remains an enduring reminder of the complexities and intrigues of medieval politics and the enduring power of mystery and intrigue. The Mystery of the Queen's Second Husband There have been persistent rumours over the years that Queen Victoria, one of Britain's most famous monarchs, had a secret second husband. While there is no concrete evidence to support this theory, some historians and researchers have put forward compelling arguments that suggest the possibility of a clandestine royal marriage. The theory of Queen Victoria's secret second husband centres on a man named John Brown, who served as her personal attendant and confidant in the years following the passing of her husband, Prince Albert. Brown was known for his loyalty and devotion to the Queen and was often seen at her side, even accompanying her on her travels throughout Europe. Some historians have suggested that the relationship between Queen Victoria and John Brown was more than just a close friendship and that the two may have secretly married. Supporters of this theory point to a number of pieces of circumstantial evidence, including the fact that Brown was often addressed by the Queen using terms of endearment, such as my dear Brown, and that she reportedly referred to him as her beloved and dearest friend. In addition, there are reports that Queen Victoria and John Brown exchanged gifts that were traditionally given between married couples, such as rings and lockets. Some historians have even suggested that the Queen may have had a child with Brown, although there is no direct evidence to support this claim. Despite these intriguing pieces of evidence, there is no definitive proof that Queen Victoria and John Brown were married. The Queen's own diaries, which are often cited as evidence of her affection for Brown, do not explicitly refer to any kind of romantic relationship between the two. Furthermore, 
there are no official records or documents that suggest a marriage took place. However, some researchers have argued that this lack of evidence may be deliberate and that the royal family may have gone to great lengths to suppress any information that could suggest a secret marriage. The idea of a queen marrying a commoner, particularly one who was seen as socially inferior, would have been scandalous at the time and could have damaged the reputation of the monarchy. Despite the tantalizing possibilities of the theory of Queen Victoria's secret second husband, it remains a subject of debate and speculation among historians and researchers. While there is no direct evidence to support the claim that she married John Brown, the circumstantial evidence and the accounts of those who knew the Queen suggest that there was certainly a deep and profound emotional connection between the two. Whether this connection was purely platonic, or whether it blossomed into something more intimate and profound, remains a mystery that may never be definitively solved. However, the speculation and intrigue surrounding the possibility of a secret royal marriage adds yet another layer of fascination to the life and legacy of Queen Victoria, one of the most enduring and iconic figures in British history. Lake Nyos Disaster Natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes and tsunamis are relatively common, and the media is frequently filled with stories of their paths of destruction and subsequent loss of life. Those who live in areas where these natural disasters are frequent are aware of the risks and often take precautions in the event of such a disaster. However, many other types of natural disasters are much more frightening and costly to life, yet are so rare that people hardly ever consider them. One such occurrence is a limnic eruption, which infamously caused what is known as the Lake Nyos disaster on the 21st of August 1986. A limnic eruption is powered by dissolved carbon dioxide that builds up within the deep waters of a lake until the pressure causes it to explode upward and outward. This explosion generates a poisonous gas cloud that can suffocate humans and animals in the vicinity, as well as potentially triggering associated events like tsunamis. The Lake Nyos disaster was one of the worst examples of such a tragedy, as between 100,000 and 300,000 tons of noxious carbon dioxide exploded from the depths of the lake in northwestern Cameroon. Some experts even estimate that there could have been as much as 1.6 million tons of carbon dioxide making up the gas cloud that formed as it was expelled from the lake at almost 100 kilometers per hour. This cloud, being heavier than the surrounding air, quickly sank over the nearby villages, replacing the oxygen and immediately suffocating hundreds of people, livestock and animals that were within 25 kilometers of the lakefront. In total, this tragedy took the lives of over 1,700 individuals and 3,500 livestock. The explosion generated a 25-meter wave across the surface of the lake that crashed to one shore, helping to power the thick gas cloud that moved down the valley. Hundreds of victims in the nearby villages of Nyos, Cam, Char, and Sabum were suffocated instantly in their sleep. Thousands more fled from the area and were able to escape, but later developed associated issues such as respiratory problems, painful lesions, and even paralysis. Luckily, limnic eruptions are incredibly rare and are frequently triggered by a preceding earthquake, volcano, or seismic activity. Additionally, they typically only occur within lakes that have already displayed elements of such activity and are therefore known as limnically active or exploding lakes. In the wake of the Lake Nyos disaster, experts engaged in multiple studies about how such a disaster could be prevented in the future, including implementing methods that help to keep the levels of carbon dioxide within a safe range by venting out the CO2 through pumps. A degassing tube system has been installed within the lake since 2001, and it was recently determined that the tubes were able to keep the levels of carbon dioxide at a steady state that dramatically reduces the risk of an eruption. Additionally, the study of this tragic disaster has prompted officials to analyze other limnically active lakes to determine the risk of a limnic explosion and several additional lakes were found to be supersaturated with carbon dioxide and subsequently underwent preventative and corrective measures to hopefully counteract a future incident. It is raining plastic in the Rocky Mountains One thing that nobody expected to be falling from the sky is plastic. Unfortunately, that is exactly what a team of researchers working with the United States Geological Survey uncovered during their analysis of rainwater samples in the Rocky Mountains. 
The team was using the samples in order to determine if nitrogen pollution was present, but what they found was even more concerning. The analysts revealed that microplastic was found in over 90% of the samples that were collected from eight different sites throughout Denver and Boulder, Colorado. And while microplastics in rainwater is not an unusual or unique occurrence, it was previously thought that most instances of contamination were limited to urban areas with much higher pollution rates. However, many of these recent samples were taken from locations that were very rural and were not expected to contain the levels of microplastics that they did. The research team stated in the report that more plastic fibers were observed in samples from urban sites than from remote, mountainous sites. However, frequent observation of plastic fibers in washout samples from the remote site CO98 at Loch Vale in Rocky Mountain National Park suggests that wet disposition of plastic is ubiquitous and not just an urban condition. The site CO98 that is referenced in the Rocky Mountains is from a rarely frequented location over 3,000 meters above sea level, where it was thought that the likelihood of plastic contamination would be low. After further analysis of the plastics, it seems that most of the contamination is from thin strands resembling synthetic fibers from many clothes and other fabrics. The plastics were noted in a variable rainbow of colors, from blue to red, purple, green and even silver. Although these microscopic particles are only visible under at least 20 times magnification and may not seem like much, the fact of the matter is that millions of tons of these microplastics make their way into our oceans and ecosystems every year. And some estimate that we consume over 70,000 microplastic particles a year at the bare minimum. These recent results confirm that there is undoubtedly much more plastic that exists unsuspected within our world and determining the extent of the potential damages is critical in assessing the state of the pollution crisis, both visible and microscopic. Because these microplastics were discovered in areas where they were totally unanticipated, the researchers who were part of the team were able to conclude that it might be quite literally raining plastic and thus affecting even the rural and unpopulated ecosystems much more than scientists had anticipated. However, because the original study was only structured for the analysis of nitrogen pollution in the collected samples, the microplastic pollution having been an unanticipated shock, much more thorough investigation is needed to determine what this discovery might mean for the microplastic pollution across the world. Something in space keeps exploding repeatedly. A mysterious cosmic blast has been spotted by astrophysicists, expelling intense and frequent blasts of pure energy. Scientists are still baffled as to what might be causing these odd explosions. The bursts have been labelled as fast radio bursts, or FRBs. This cosmic marvel originates back in 2007 when it first appeared. The radio aspect of the electromagnetic spectrum is triggered by FRBs, which create radio wave pulses. These blasts are short, lasting a mere few thousandths of a single second, but their strength and power is so great it overpowers the amount of energy our sun releases in an entire year. It is common for FRBs to release a radio wave explosion only one time in their lifetime. But the object now known as FRB 121102 and some others release these bursts of energy multiple times at random moments. FRB 121102 was found to be located 3 billion light years away from Earth in a dwarf galaxy. Using the Chinese FAST or 500-meter aperture spherical radio telescope, astronomers were able to experiment and explore possibilities with FRB 121102. FAST is the most advanced radio telescope on the planet. It is able to detect the smallest changes in outer space that normal telescopes used by space organizations such as NASA might not manage to see. In a span of only 60 hours, FRB 121102 blasted energy a shocking 1,652 times, that is up to 117 times in a single hour. Never before has an FRB created pulses at such insane speeds. FRBs tend to occur away from Earth, meaning we rarely get a chance to adequately study them. Exceptionally, in 2020, an FRB was discovered in our Milky Way, 
It turns out that the source of this particular FRB close to us is a magnetar. Magnetars are deceased stars produced from neutron stars. This is the first time we have ever discovered a source of an FRB, and it is uncertain whether all magnetars are the origins of FRBs or just this one. Still, where the FRB comes from is now not known. The leading theory suggests it comes from magnetic reactions on the magnetar's surface. Its magnetic field rivals that of Earth by trillions, and therefore the FRB blasts might come as a result of such volatile magnetic fields. The FRB blasts created by the Milky Way magnetar are nowhere near as intense or frequent as FRB 121102's is, but research into this subject is still fresh and there are infinite things scientists do not yet understand about FRBs. None of the research is yet conclusive. Scientist Victoria Caspi stated, the question is now for the theorists. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.